Components are the most commonly used feature in Vue. They're not hard to understand or use. First, we must ask ourselves, what are components? Components are the pieces that make up your application. It's stuff like the header, footer, and content. It's basically the sections inside your HTML. Storing the template for an application in a single file can be hard to manage. Therefore, it's ideal to split the template into separate files. This is what's called components. Components are templates, but they're a bit more than that. They can contain their own data, methods, computed properties, and watchers. By themselves, they can't do much. They're meant to be used in the main application. On top of allowing you to split your code into separate files, they are reusable. That part is optional. For example, you would create a header component but only use it once since most sites only have one header. On the other hand, you can have a post component but use it multiple times because sites can have various posts. It's up to you in the end how you use components. Alright, let's see a component in action. Components must be created before you mount the application. That's important to note down. We're going to write the code before we call the mount method in the app.js file. The component we're going to create will be simple. It will render a message. We can create a component by calling the component function. This function is available after we create the view application. This function has two parameters. The first parameter is the name of the component. You can name your component whatever you want. There are two naming conventions Vue encourages, kebab case and pascal case. Kebab case is when all characters are lowercase and words are separated with hyphens. Pascal case is when every word is capitalized. On top of Vue's naming convention, I'm going to recommend you namespace your component names. Namespacing is the idea where the name you give something is unique to your project. Some people will use the initials of their project or their name. Then you would follow it up with the actual name of the component. For example, if we were creating a blog application and creating a post component, we could name this blog-post. There are plugins you may end up using in your application that provides their own components. To ensure you don't face any name collision issues, it's recommended you namespace your components. In the end, it's all up to you. Since this is just an example, there's no need for namespacing. We'll keep the name simple. We're going to call this component hello. The second parameter for this function is a configuration object for the component. The settings are the same settings you would use in a regular view instance. This means we can add the data, computed, and methods property. The main advantage of using a component is that these properties values are unique to this component. Even if we have another component with similar named values, we don't have to worry about naming collisions between components. Not every property is available. For example, the mount method can't be used with a component. Even though components are created similarly to view instances, they can't be used to create an application. If you tried using the mount method, then you would receive an error. Components are meant to be used as pieces for your view application. One of the problems with writing a component is not writing the template in the document. This restriction forces us to use the template property. Let's create the template. We'll add the template property to the configuration for the component. The value will be a string literal. We're going to add an h1 element with the message data property. The message doesn't exist because we don't have any data in the component. Let's work on creating the data property next. We'll set the data property to a function where we'll return an object. Inside this object, we'll create the message property with a value of hello world. That's it. We've created our first component. By using the component function, we've registered a custom component. Custom components can be used in the view instance or in other components. Let's use it inside the view instance. From the view instance, we're going to remove the data function. The message will come from the component. We don't need to store it in the instance. 
I want to be clear that even if we kept the property around, the application would still work. The instance data and our components data are isolated from one another. Vue will not throw an error for having data properties with similar names. Moving along, to use a component, you create a set of tags. The name of the tag will be the name you gave the component. It's the same value you passed into the first parameter of the component function. In our case, this would be hello. We're going to create three copies of this component. Vue will replace this tag with the template you passed into the component. We have the option of using self-closing tags. Let's refresh the page to view the final result. The hello tags were replaced with the components template. The expression we had in the components template was interpolated. Currently, each component has the same value for the message property, but the data is unique to each component. We can prove this further. Opening the view developer tools, we will find the root component along with three hello components. The hello component may be called an anonymous component because we haven't registered a name for our component. We will learn how to assign a name in a future lecture. It's not something we have to worry about at the moment. The root component will not have any data because we removed it. Each hello component has the message inside its data property. We'll select the second hello component. Then we'll update the message property to something else. After updating it, the message expression inside the second hello component was updated, thus proving the data is unique to each component. Alright, that does it for components. There's so much more you can do with components, but we'll get to that later. As your application gets bigger, you'll want to split your code into various files. Components help us with that. Before we dive deeper into components, it's time that we start considering the tools necessary to scale an application. Things are starting to become difficult. It's only going to get increasingly difficult to explore other parts of Vue. We also should be using the build of Vue that doesn't come with the compiler. Using the build without the compiler means we have to code objects rather than regular HTML. How do we overcome this? The developer and creator of Vue has created a tool called the Vue CLI. The Vue CLI simplifies the development of Vue by taking care of the more complicated parts of building an application. The only drawback is that you need to be familiar with tools like SAS, Webpack, and Babel. If you're already familiar with these tools, then that's great. If not, that's fine as well. The next section will cover these tools to get you up to speed. If you're as excited as I am, then I'll see you in the next section.